Good morning. I am Zina Riyad Abdullah, a lecturer at Al Nahrain University in Baghdad, and welcome to the first lecture of Urban Environment. Urban Environment is a course dedicated for the undergraduate students, the fifth year senior uh, students of the Department in Architecture at our university. Today we will be talking about uh, four main concepts by defining and understanding the concepts of sustainable architecture, what is sustainable architecture, uh, environmental design and the reasons why we need to study environmental design and the microclimate, what is the microclimate of a building and how is it created and of course their relationship to the urban environment and uh, the urban heat island effect uh, and causes. Uh, we'll be uh, defining sustainable architecture. So what is sustainable architecture? It is the architecture that seeks to minimize and even eliminate the negative environmental impact of a building uh, through energy efficiency and moderation of using natural resources and of course uh, producing less waste and zero pollution and securing economic prosperity and promote livable and vibrant places. So what we are trying to do is ensure that through our architectural design our uh, building is, as we can see in the graph, environmentally responsible so we need to think about the environment before uh, we uh, start designing a building. In the early stages of design, it is of course the best time to start thinking about the effects of the environment and how it will affect our design. And of course, uh, promoting social well-being, uh, the social aspect of sustainability is a very major and important one, and uh, of course ensuring economic prosperity. When we talk about resource efficiency, uh, a lot of people think that it's just by choosing uh, a sustainable uh, type of material, but ha what is a sustainable type of material? So we need to take into consideration all the stages of the life cycle of uh, the materials used in our buildings. So for example, we start at the resource extraction. How are these resources extraction, uh, extracted from nature? Uh, what is the amount of power they need, what is the amount of resources they need to be extracted and do we, uh, would they cause pollution while they are extracting for example and of course manufacturing, what are the types of uh, factories, what are the types of, uh, what is the type of manufacturing that they need like for example uh, wood uh, perhaps just needs a little bit of cutting and, uh, and, and, and perhaps uh, processing uh, the material, uh, but cement, for example, is a different type. It, it needs a whole factory and uh, a whole process of manufacturing that needs to be taken into consideration. And of course, on-site construction. Um, how how we uh, how we can bring it to the site of construction? How long is uh, the distance? How far away is it, will, will, will the material need to be shipped from another country, for example, or is it a local material that can be easily obtained? Uh, building occupancy and maintenance. So after we have the material and we've used it and uh, through the online uh, uh, construction, we'll be thinking about the occupancy of the building. Will this need maintenance? Will it uh, need uh, uh, expenses for maintenance? And, of course, building demolition. If we want to demolish the building, can this be, for example, reused or do we need to dispose it? Can it be recycled? Uh, so all of these take into, are taken into consideration when we are choosing uh, the material for a sustainable building. So why study environmental design? We all know that the environment affects our buildings, okay, and we need to select the appropriate design strategies for our buildings according to the climate, but there are sometimes uh, things that people do not expect or do not understand, uh, like the effect of the building itself on the environment uh, or on the climate. Uh, we have an example here, a building in, um, in London, it is known as the Walkie Talkie building, and this is a part of an article and the, head of the headline of the article was uh, a building that can fry an egg. Uh, it's very catchy and this, uh, because of the concave facade of the building, uh, what happens is it, uh, the sunlight, the sun rays are uh, reflected into a spot on the road, uh, on the street, uh, right in front of the building as we can see here in the, 
in the picture and this uh, spot uh, caused a fire in a car actually uh, that was standing on the street and because we all know that sun rays move and this, uh, this, this spot will not be stable for in the same place for the whole uh, the whole day so it will be moving so it caused a fire in one of the one of the stories of the building right in cross uh, and as we can see the people are actually frying eggs in the street in london uh, now we, we know that here in iraq that would be normal when we have 50 degrees celsius but to be able to fry an egg in um, in a city like london is not uh, expected so because of a design decision that the architect did not really think about thoroughly or perhaps it didn't occur to him that uh, a design decision like a concave uh, reflecting glass facade uh, would cause um, such an issue. And here we can see um, a section of the building and how the sun rays are reflect onto the, uh, the curved face and uh, what happens is the rays are concentrated into one area which causes the heat of course of that spot and uh, here we can see the articles that the walkie-talkie architect didn't realize it was going to be so hot it was very hard for him to uh, understand that a design decision like this would be so effective and would have negative effects and of course now he uh, i think he was facing lawsuits and uh, the sort so why study environmental design to make the right design decisions according to the climate and microclimate of the buildings uh, we see here a picture of the traditional urban layout of uh, a middle eastern city uh, what people were trying to do then were actually to make their own microclimate to uh, provide uh, uh, to make the, their own uh, microclimate and to protect people from harsh climatic conditions like uh, uh, high temperatures and sunlight in areas like us and provide as much shading as possible. And of course we study environmental design uh, to achieve indoor air quality that can be achieved through natural ventilation, uh, lighting quality by uh, studying the, the area of uh, fenestration, the area of the windows and the type and uh, the shading devices used and of course thermal comfort uh, which is all always an issue and energy efficiency how much energy do I actually use uh, do I actually need uh, for heating cooling and ventilating the building and of course acu uh, acoustic comfort so what is the microclimate a microclimate is a local set of atmospheric conditions that differ from those of the surrounding area for example in an urban area Tall buildings create uh, their own microclimate both by overshadowing large areas and by channeling strong winds to ground level. Uh, so the microclimate is, we can say that is the area affected by the building. It's an area perhaps surrounded or it might be within a building, but it is affected by the design. Uh, one of the uh, one of the examples I always give to students is uh, Babylon Mall here in Baghdad. Uh, it has a court in front of, uh, of the mall and uh, they've added uh, fountains and it's really easy to, uh, to notice the drop in temperatures when you enter into that space, into that court. And there's a, a very, very big difference in the temperatures between the road outside of the mall and, uh, and the space. So if you're in there you can enjoy uh, considerably low temperatures and then when you walk outside you'll be uh, baffled with uh, the high temperatures that uh, are coming from the road so because of these design decisions because of the space that he, uh, that the designer has created which is shaded and because of the water elements that helps in uh, reducing temperatures uh, you can see that he's provided uh, a place that can be that people can enjoy in summer uh, in summertime with low temperatures uh, well relatively low temperatures for the city of Baghdad and of course as we said uh, tall buildings for example channel wind so the area surrounding a tall building uh, will be affected by the design decisions like for example the uh, 
the direction of, uh, of uh, the facades and the shape, of course, of the building and uh, their relation to one direction. Uh, decisions like that need to be taken into consideration and studied uh, through, the, uh, through the early design stages. So a question that always rises is, can the same building be built in Baghdad and London? Uh, here we see Mazda Institution in Abu Dhabi, which is for Foster and Partners. Uh, Norman Foster is a Sir Norman Foster is a worldwide known architect, and he is known for his um, modern, perhaps, uh, style using glass and steel, especially in the buildings in London. But when he designed uh, these bu uh, this building or this complex in Abu Dhabi, we can see that it, it's a diff it's a totally different style. Uh, he used local materials, and uh, we can uh, you can notice the small and tiny uh, openings and windows and uh, local elements. And as we can see here, the alley uh, reminds us as uh, the small alleyways uh, that we know, or paths that uh, we see in um, in the traditional layouts of our old cities in the Middle East. So even the same architect would need to perhaps uh, shift his style or change his style according to the location and the climate of his, uh, of the project. Uh, here we see one of the buildings here in Baghdad in Mansour, which is home center building. I remember passing this building uh, when it was first uh, opened and we can see a really big glass facade and it's, uh, I think it's covered with glass from more than one from two uh, sides. And when it first opens, they were really uh, happy with the design, and it was open, and it was lit up, and uh, beautiful. But in a few months after summer came, what we, uh, what we can see is using shading devices and blocking all of the windows. So really, you, you lose the uh, effect of the glass and you, you, uh, the transparency that you need. And uh, so a design decision like this might not have been um, um, very well chosen for a climate like Baghdad. And uh, what is the urban heat island effect? So when we study environmental design, um, of course we need to relate it to uh, the urban environment um, and the climate in, uh, in general. So what is the urban heat island or UHI is a metropolitan area and that's a lot warmer than the rural areas surrounding it. Heat is created by energy from the people uh, from cars, buses, trains in big cities like New York, Paris and London especially. Uh, urban heat islands are created in areas like these, places that have lots of activity and lots of people. What, it, uh, what we can um, notice in, in big major metropolitan cities is that the, uh, the temperatures are actually higher than the rural areas in 3 to 10 uh, degrees Celsius, which is significantly uh, a big amount. Uh, so the main reasons of uh, UHI is uh, the heat that comes from buildings, the heat that comes from transportation, from the cars, the heat that comes from uh, electric devices and, 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 and such. Uh, we have uh, heat reflecting from uh, the roads, um, uh, the heat reflected from, uh, of course, the buildings and, of course, sunlight. And sometimes even uh, the facades and the material used reflect sunlight and cause um, uh, an increase in heat gain. Uh, another problem that we can see in, uh, in metropolitan areas, which is different from rural areas, is even at night time, uh, the temperatures remain high, where in rural areas they drop significantly. And that is mostly because uh, the little, well, there's not much veg vegetation, and of course, the not, because of the temperature that is locked inside the buildings, and uh, of course the sidewalks, the parkings, um, uh, they gain the, temp uh, the heat through the day, and therefore it is locked and then released again during the night, which causes uh, the temperatures to stay high uh, during night time. And of course, the more we can think about our buildings and the more we take into consideration these, uh, these decisions through the design and the more we work towards uh, achieving energy efficiency in our buildings, we can help in eliminating or perhaps uh, reducing the urban heat island effect even by a little. 
So the question that will be left for future lectures is what will your solutions be? As architects, what are the design decisions that you need to, that you need to make? And uh, we will be uh, talking about that in our next lectures. So thank you for your attention and goodbye.